It is the Anfield wrap after Liverpool lost to Manchester United by two goals to two. Uh, I am joined by Josh Williams, Ian Salmon and uh, Joel Richards. Uh, and we are brought to you by Green King. Uh, like every podcast over the course of this season, it is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Uh, you can make Green King your go-to destination uh, for the season's final stretch. Why? Well, for one, uh, it's got delicious food and lovely drinks, 900 of them across the country, so you're always within walking distance of one. And always, as we always say on the Anfield wrap Regardless, football is better with people. So get everyone together for uh, this Premier League running uh, in an atmosphere worth sharing, my word. Uh, that was not my Old Trafford for 40 minutes yesterday. There was no atmosphere at Old Trafford, but we'll come on to that in a minute or two for 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Uh, anyway, uh, it will include title showdowns. There will be European qualification, relegation six-pointers, and European sport in general. The Green King Sport app uh, will help you out with competitions, discounts, etc., etc. Uh, Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2. Um, Josh Williams, clop out. <laughs> I've just seen that on the agenda there and I was thinking, where's he going with this? Clop out! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Obviously that's not the point. It is uh, an utterly infuriating way to drop points. Yeah. I was infuriated by it when it was... The, the weird thing was, though, in the ground, so where the match is going on, there's people around you and people are losing their minds. I'm not, because the thing I'm thinking is these are so weird. At any point, we could score not one goal, but two. <laughs> so it's 2-1 and I'm thinking we can still get two. I think maybe we can get three. It's 2-2. Two, two. It's 93 minutes when Diaz misses what he misses and I think, not that there's one more chance in this for us mm. but there's maybe two because they're so weird so I've become more infuriated by results outcome aspects of performance since the final whistle than I even was in the ground a ground which was for 45 minutes 48 minutes absolutely silent have you managed to reach a philosophical point yet because I'm asking on behalf of a friend <laughs> I mean, the, the last time I was on this pod was was on the back of the the Man United FA Cup game. Oh yeah, um, which correlation is, is not causation. No, no, but it, 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 so it felt fault. <laughs> correlation is not causation. It, it, it felt similar back then, to be honest. Um, in terms of the performance being pretty good, I think this performance was better than that performance as well. But you're going to be nicer about them than I am. <laughs> but the players, mate, just in terms of both boxes, not really delivering for. Klopp, funnily enough, and it's the second time again where Klopp, after the game, just indirectly basically says once again, what, it's not on me this, you know, what, what can I do more? Yeah, I've, I've coached the team to generate 28 shots, um, I think we faced nine, you know, dominated them for large periods, didn't face a shot in the, in the first half, and you, you don't kill the game, and you, you make a mad, mad error in the middle of nowhere, just... It's just so frustrating, isn't it? At this point in the season when you, you would hope that a team like this learns from what happened at this stadium It was a different, though, I think. I think it, you said before it was better. I just think it was different in that I think during the periods where the most dominant in the cup game, they actually don't create mm -hmm. anywhere near as many opportunities or even at times opportunities for opportunities. There's a lot of... I think they were knackered then, and I think there's a lot of them just moving the ball and it's sterile domination. This domination did result in opportunities. I think this is worth pointing out. Yeah. And it resulted in quite quality opportunities. But even then, the quality of the opportunity could have gone up another notch. And that to me is the frustration. It's that I think I think the I do agree that the better, and certainly the better during the period where the dominant. But I still also think, you know, firstly the shots they get they should be doing more with and better with. Mm. And they could also be creating better shots and better opportunities simultaneously, which is mad in a situation where they've had 19 shots before Man United have had two and got the equaliser. Yeah, I think it was... Um, <laughs> Man United have this way about them where they're so nuts, so wild and, and borderline stupid that you, you kind of descend into what they are a little bit and they can make you just as chaotic as they are if you let that happen. And I think in the FA Cup game, we allowed that to happen far too much for large periods. In this game, if it struck me as us being a bit more controlled for the most part, aside from a 15-minute period in the second half where we conceded twice, um, you know, Kwanzaa just kind of almost allows that to happen almost with, with, with his mistake a little bit, but then we get, we get control again. So I think we had a lot more control for me and similar opportunities to kill the game, but, but just didn't. Uh, and Man United take take advantage of of the the few opportunities they do get, and just a, such a weird, crazy team that that side just so annoying, mate. Um, you more philosophical today? I've been trying to be. So we used to be philosophical. Neil Docking was having a good go last night. Uh, Old Trafford is never as easy for Liverpool uh, as it should be. Uh, nobody has more points than us right now. Seven games to go. The nature of other sides' runs. Um, look back at. 
the team between 18, 2018 and 2020, look at the team in the 1980s, uh, results at Old Trafford, etc., etc. This is me trying, Ian. I want to be quite clear, I am not succeeding. I am not succeeding. I'm in a state of relaxed fury at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a very pissed off philosophical mood. I've, I've got this whole dichotomy going on in my head and I don't know exactly where I am from minute to minute. Um, I'm, I'm with Josh. I think it, I think that was a better performance yesterday in the FA Cup game. I thought we were better. I think when you say that the ground was very quiet, you're being very unfair to, to our away end because I Ooh. thought our away end was spectacular. It was just the United fans who didn't make a noise for 48 minutes. Um that's what I meant, but yeah. to be clear. We, we, we were, not we, I wasn't there. Our end was great. It was fantastic. It was completely behind the game and making a hell of a lot of noise. Um, I, th- I think, I've just been saying this on the way in, I think um, I think we partially played the occasion, the event, the status of the game and the jeopardy inherent in the status of that game rather than just playing the game. I think that was a team of lads who know the... They had to be precise because everything they did was going to count. And by having to be precise, they managed to not be precise. They made all the wrong decisions all over the place. I think there's moments when Mo puts the ball over the, the bar because he's aiming so close to the top of the net and then just, just missed it completely. I think I think Old Trafford got in their heads before the game. I think Do you? Not- I do. I, I think I the get idea fifteen is shots in a ground yeah. in a half if mm. they're in your head. This is the. This, I but, think this but is most the dichotomy. Of them great shots, uh, but a lot of them were quite good. I mean, Sabozla is one on one. Sabozla is great. Yeah, it's a great save. Like, this is the, I, this is what I find difficult because I want to say in a way I almost want to go and, and Old Trafford's in the head. I think if anything they're almost too relaxed, or almost trying to come over too I, relaxed. Like I, I can't quite settle on this. I, I, I think they're almost, or if maybe then Old, it's like this triple bluff of hey we're not going to make it look like Old Trafford's in our heads, so we're going to do this, so therefore Old Trafford won't be in our heads. But then I'm just, I'm I, just of the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost of the view that United's weirdness is a co- more of a core problem than Old Trafford here. That United are such a weird team. But by all means, if you think it's United. Old Trafford in their heads I just I, want to hear I, the arguments I think it's the whole thing I think it's the event I think it's the, the knowing that you need to win I think it's the still being up with Arsenal on um, goal difference as still being up with Arsenal on points as we start I think it's the whole thing of being we win this we're top of the league we win this we're top of the league and I don't think I think the FA Cup game <laughs> we relaxed we were relaxed we were compo- we were complacent and we went in with an attitude and swagger that we'd already won it I don't think we did that yesterday I think we were still make, trying to make the game win I think heads obviously the 15 shots but at the same time I do think we were playing the event and I think we were trying too hard to make things happen perfectly mm. and the things that we were trying too hard I'm, as I said I'm very confused on this whole thing because <laughs> we, so my we, we can like at 1-0 if we score the second we win 5-0 the game's over. The game is over if we get that second in the first half. It's, it's over and it's going to be a demolition. And then and then we've gone completely for 20 minutes, but then we're on top again and we're still doing the wrong things. It's our decision-making all the way through, and I think our decision-making has predic- been predicated by what is at stake in that game. I So, to go, I want to go to the start. What was really interesting was... I might just be talking shy. No, I don't think you are. <laughs> I think there's, I think there's stuff in what you're saying that's really fair, and I, think it's, I th- and I think that this is where the shape of it is. And I think the game in the end, goes through far too many twists and turns from Liverpool's point of view in terms of where sort of mind space is at. One of the things that struck me was, it being in the end, Joel, and I know you were there as well because I saw you on the concourse, was first and foremost, the reaction of the Liverpool supporters to literally the start of the game, like the two minutes before the start of the game, was the most, it was beyond stuff I've seen in a cup final, it was like, we've been waiting for this, we're relishing this, this is what we're about, we're going to do this here, this is this is where it's going to come from. And I thought that you then got to sort of see that with the players, and there's a couple of moments first half where Quanta is a little slack in possession in the, in, in the first sort of 15 or so, but it looked to me like the players had that as well. And that they had this moment of, no, 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 we are going to absolutely impose ourselves here. And there's the early offside thing from Garnacho, and that sort of gets in people's heads. But I think that Liverpool from 0 to 30 are pretty much about as good as you can be. Going to an opposition ground who's a top six club, yeah, who's a major rival, yeah. about as good as you can be. And then I th- I just think the entire thing, when you're thinking about sort of where mentalities end up, does become that they just don't get the second. Like, and I, I think that they're right. If you, my point is, I, I was before the game. I was like, you got to start well. They've got to start well. They've got to yeah. start well. Not to thirty. They couldn't have done much better against a really unconventional football team. That to me says that the mentality was right. Not to thirty. If you see what I mean. Yeah. 
I th- and I think it was, and, and, and I agree with you there, we had to go and impose ourselves on the game, which is what we pretty much did. So the plan, if that was the plan, we carried it out to a T. So the first half an hour is some of the best that you've probably seen from them in the last couple of months. Uh, you, you know, you'd argue, and that's considering the, the performance we had against Man City over the whole piece. So we go to Old Trafford, and how many times in our lifetimes have we gone, apart from the 5-0, how many times have we gone there and seen a Liverpool side dominate as much as that? And, and the answer's probably none. So, so it, it, it adds into how frustrating and how even more annoying is that we've let this game slip from our hands and it does feel like a defeat. Like you said, yeah. we lost 2-2. I felt like that myself. Even though, obviously, I'm glad we got the points in the end because you're relieved, but you can't take any further satisfaction from that. It's a, thank God we didn't lose because had we lost, again, that's two defeats in the space of three weeks to them. And then what does it do to you for the rest of the running? Especially the fact that you've got to go to Goodison. And again, I know we're going to talk about Goodison later on, so I won't, I won't talk too much about it now. But... That bleeds Clop into out. its own, own, own comple- complex. Massive pressure on the manager if he doesn't get a result. <laughs> <Exactly. mean job. laughs> <laughs> but it, it has parallels with 18 19 for me. Because 18 19, we go there and have a. And, well, the two, the, two, the two ways against Devon and Man United, the two terrible 0 0 draws, and where we stink the gaff out in both of them. But we don't stink the gaff out here for the third no, this, and this, this is why it's so. Like in many ways, I'd rather they've just been a bit crap and got a draw. Yeah. If you sort of know what I mean. Like if they've just been a bit crap and, and, and you know, you're able to. Because you. Oh, and maybe. And in some aspects of the game, they were a bit crap and we'll come on to talk about that. But I'd almost just rather they just stank the gaff out, we get a draw and we all walk out of there. Yeah. The point is, I'm, I'm 25, I'm going, we're well better than these. Yeah. And and, and, and I've, again, it's the whole. Because I've. Whenever I've been to Old Trafford, I've never seen us win there. I've been, I've, for some reason or another, I've always missed ah, the wins. So that, 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 <laughs> well, possibly, who knows? But I mean, you, you talk about the atmosphere at Old Trafford. Before kickoff, it was weird. They, they didn't even play any music at one point. I remember, I, I remember getting up to, into my seat after seeing you, and before kickoff, it was like there was this eerie silence, not just from the crowd, but from. Even like someone at Old Trafford's thought, oh, we can't, what, what, what sort of music should we play until this is the one comes on? Fuck all. It was, like, it was just, it was, it was a morgue atmosphere. Like, do, and, and obviously the, the pitch hard and just trying to do his best saying the, the greatest club in the world and all that, all that jargon that they say. But it was, it was just like, a funeral atmosphere until this is the one kicked it's in. It's mad how much, by the way, the pitch side announcer sounds like he's doing Butlins at Blackpool. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's honestly it, this is the north. This is the north in all its glory. Hello, this oh, is no. it's like a Peter Case sketch going anyway. And, um, and and so that all fed into it because it's like it's like thinking, God, this just this just feels all too much of a perfect storm for us to go there and batter them. And after the week they had as well, where they lost five points in the space of however many minutes and stoppage time and both of the fixes that they had. So again, that's all feeding into it. And I was naturally nervous anyway, as I said on the post-match show Thursday night. And I'll, and I'll, re, I'll, I'll go over our record very quickly there. In our, in, in our entire history of playing them away, in nearly 130 years, we've only ever won there 18 times in the league. I think maybe one cup as well, so 19 overall. So historically, Liverpool don't do well at Old Stafford. It's like Everton at Anfield. And then, as I say, in my lifetime, maybe Josh's lifetime as well, we've only won there seven times. So God knows how many. T- You're not fucking cheering me up here, by the way. But it's maybe one or two. I'm on the verge of just going around and having a, having a walk towards that river there. Go on. <laughs> so it's it, it, it's all feeding into it. And I, I looked at the stats this morning, and that's pissed me off further. You know the way you're pissed off, seeing the fact that it was zero shots, zero on target in that first half, and looking at ours. It, again, I'd rather have Man United have battered us that first half, and we we were weathering the storm rather than they. The first half, the key for me, Josh. I, 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 you know, listen, it's it's a slack ball from Quanta. Don't get me wrong. And by the way, it's a. I, I put it in my piece last night. It's a brilliant finish. I mean, it's a. Brilliant, yeah, he's the, the only player on the pitch who does that. By the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because oh, he's the only one who's. Yeah. In loads of ways, he's the only player on the pitch who does that. Like some of them are actually negative. If you know yeah. what I mean. But he he does that. And but they're such a moments team, and he's such a moments player. It's like the purest bit of moments moments mm. you've ever seen. You know, but park that for a second. The first half, the key for me, because they have 15 shots. Some of them are actually really good opportunities. Uh, some of them are actually relatively good shots. Um, but A, the shots themselves on the whole do need to be better. But also B, the quality could well be better. There's, And this is the oddness of playing them. Because one, they do loads of really good chaos defending because fucking hell they're used to it yeah. they're doing it every week they've got they're really well practiced in what you do when the, when the situation's gone to shit uh, they're doing it every single week but also number two I think that's I think that's the one thing that's sort of in our heads there's a point where for instance Bradley is carrying it and he squares it when he should just go on himself and drill it mm. uh, but he, Liverpool have obviously been 
having this idea of taking another touch, don't get sucked in, etc., etc. But it's dead easy to say don't get sucked in when you're going to have so many shots and it's going to open up for you so many times because sometimes you'll get sucked into doing the wrong thing because you're thinking, oh, let's go, what? Let's, let's move it one more time. But you can make the opportunity harder by doing that. Yeah, the first half I, I felt was virtually perfect, really. I mean, you, you you can't be much better than that in terms of especially just keeping them quiet, like containing that team who are nuts, got good individual players, speed, you know, ability when it comes to finding a pass in behind and things like that, to keep them quiet and to keep them to zero shots for a full half away from home is some doing. And we were, we were absolutely on point, in control, with a lead, up until Kwanzaa's, you know, mistake. Um, another thing with that as well, people naturally putting it down to inexperience. I've I've seen thirty two year olds make make that same error. You know, that's not that's not a youngster thing. That that's just one of them things that it just shit happens. happens, isn't it, Josh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It literally is. But this is why you've got to be two 0 up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah shit exactly. happens, especially against them. Given the sort, of, that's yeah. why you've got to be two 0 up. Yeah. yeah, but the the chaos defending point is a, is, is a good one because like w- when you are in on their back line, like there was, we had, I think we had another. Five on two, by the way. Remember yeah. a couple of weeks ago we touched on that. I think it was a five on two a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Wasn't it? We had another one, um, and it was all going very well up until Nunes squares it to someone in the stands, I think, or something like that. But um, th- th- just that kind of attacking is it. You don't you don't usually get them opportunities every week, and 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 I think in certain attacks that we had. If you'd never seen football before, you'd think the game involved walking the ball into the net as opposed to just. Taking a scruffy shot, or against Man United, you need to accept the scruffy shots. There was a point where Diaz, um, I think it was that five on two, where he had to back stick to, to Nunes. I think Diaz can shoot, and I think someone who's just a bit more. It's it's the angle he's at when he scores against Arsenal to make it 2 0 in the cup. Yeah, it's the angle he's at as well when he scores to give us the lead at Spurs and it gets ruled out. The VAR, yeah. you know, shambles. It, it, he's in a similar position there as well, so. I don't know, lad. They just they, they make you overthink and they make you make stupid decisions and that. But even still, that number of shots, that number of touches in the box and things like that, and it was the same at Anfield. It was the same with in the FA Cup. You do just usually win those games, and and, and to not, it, it is just mad. It's, it's a crazy, crazy team at the minute. I keep saying it. Do you feel like those times you you talking about those chances there, Josh? There was quite a few instances, first half and second half, where it felt like we were getting, we were going through the middle, but we were getting crowded out. I feel like, you know, we would, we didn't really push too much on the centre back pair and that they had, you know, Maguire and that Cambuale, because that mm. was only his second Premier League start. So there was a chance to hit them and attack them. But as I say, there was there was certain breaks of play where we were going at them, and for some reason we're going through the middle, but United were getting everyone back, and then the the, the back there and Liverpool were just getting crowded out. And as you say, there was the, the, the wrong options were getting tough at the at, at the worst possible time. Where you know, go for the shot yourself, but then they're going for the extra pass. And then there was that one in the second half. I think you, that's the one you're mentioning about Nunes, where it goes across, it goes, it weirdly yeah, swerves yeah, yeah. across goals, doesn't it? So there was times like that where there was just they're going through the middle, but maybe go out wide a bit, a bit more, or go to Robertson, or go to Bradley when Bradley was on, or even in the second half when Gomez is, is playing way wide right than Elliot in particular, but they're just going through this middle, and, and they're just not picking the right passes. Yeah, the, the, they're so determined at the time to, to create that clear-cut shot, and when you're facing a team like United, just the way they seem to defend, their, their willingness to just retreat and drop the defensive line with you is... is it's it's just different. It's just it's just quite weird facing that team, and I think in certain other games Liverpool can can attack, and the 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 optimal decision is just is is just clear in, in most moments. But I think against United, you've almost got so many options that you, you you take the wrong one, or you take an extra touch, or far too many extra touches, or the ball will come to you in the box, and rather than controlling it and then shooting, you'll shoot with your first touch, and it'll go over the bar or something like that. Just a load of you know curious decision making like that, and. You know, I've seen people touch on like Jota would have scored three, you know, things like that. And uh, this he might, but Jota for me is is not that dissimilar to the likes of Salah and Nunes and that in the sense that he can be a scruffy kind of forward in in in, in his nature. I know he's quite cold when it comes to his finishing as well, but just that kind of I don't know. I, I just think it was just such a weird game with that with that team. And I think we've had eighty seven shots against them across the three games this season. And we've scored four from open play, um, which is a very low conversion rate. And yeah, it's just weird, mate. Witchcraft. 
I think we're being far too kind to the Man United at the moment. I think we keep describing them as weird and chaotic and um, bad. Yeah, they're just shite. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They're just, they're, they're, but they're the best yeah. shite team I've ever seen. They're, yeah. they're, but, <laughs> yeah. They're currently clinging on better than most shite teams, but they they did start the day twenty two points behind. Yeah, us. yeah, but the, that's, that's but the, what we should be. But the shite. I mean, there's a key shite, point yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. like, there's loads of things to do. That's the stuff that a bottom ten team does. But they are sixth, and we haven't beaten them all season. And uh, they're, getting, they're they, getting away with it somehow. They, they have faced more shots than Luton. So yeah, this Luton. is all of this. Thirty one games, mate. Thirty one games, more shots than Luton. Well, I think you were the first to point this out on Twitter. They were doing twenty shots a game, yeah, yeah, repeatedly. Yeah. Well, no, they're averaging since the, turn, since the turn of the year. Now they'll be averaging something like conceding twenty after after yes, conceding something like twenty five, twenty six shots a game. Yeah. They are the best shite team that's ever existed. It's so, remarkable. Like fair play to them. Take your hat off is, to the to the a, Denzians of Manchester. Is this a master class of shiteness by yes. Ken Hag? And is, <laughs> has he designed a team to be? They knows they're so bad that they're going to go out and be appallingly bad, and they're just going to confuse well, people because they're clearly confusing the hell out of us. I, th- I think this this is where it's, I'm getting the idea that it's in their heads because everything they did had to be more precise, and there, there were no. It's it's the same thing we've done quite a few times a season where we've taken the extra touch when we should be shooting, or we shot when we should be taking the extra shoot, extra, but, extra touch. But they concede thirty odd shots to Brentford. Brentford only score with the last one. Yeah. They concede. They score three at Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea themselves are weird at the minute. Don't get me wrong. As I say, they sit sixth. They do sit sixth in the table, and they will almost certainly finish sixth if you look at the results from this weekend. It doesn't look like anyone's going to come for a run at them. So this is why it's we, and this is why I don't want to just sort of go. They are shy, don't get me wrong, but they're so used to being this bad. They're quite good at it. Mm. This is the this this is what I mean. Like the so the, the, br- like, the, the brilliance of blocks, the, the brilliance at last stage blocks, because they're doing them every week. They're a Wimbledon eighty eight version of shite. Clearly sort a very of. bad football team, but managing to survive. Um, and also, they're still a negative goal difference, aren't they? The minus one, yeah. Yeah, and then and then you look at the home defeats they've had this season because I've, <laughs> I've, co- I've covered most of them, and this is what pisses me off further. They got battered their own to Brighton early on. Bournemouth have battered them there 3-0. Palace, under Roy Hodgson, got a 1-0 there, and then Fulham, not too <laughs> long the ago, ultimate, got a smack... Got, well, Fulham were by far the better team over the piece, I should say that. But Fulham, they they got one, they got a late winner in about the 97th minute, something like that. And again, it just feeds, and I'm looking at the home to you've had this season. I'm like, why can't, why couldn't we do it in all that? And, and, and why haven't we beaten a team in the top six yet away from home as well? Keep moving it along a little bit. Um, it's a different game at 1 1, Joel. Um, we're not very good at 1 1, uh, to be honest with you, into 2 1. But then I think that, you know. I think we're quite good at two one, um, and two one leading into one point being better than better than zero. Again, there's no difference in the last Elliot shot, uh, as far as I'm concerned, to the Palmer shot in the game against Chelsea. But the Palmer shot deflects in our one doesn't. Um, say what you want, it's out the way now. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think the ha- I think I think we had a day. Sure, treating the positive. There. I, I actually <laughs> think it's a ter- I think it's actually a terrible half an hour from us. If I'm being honest, yeah. I think he even from the first couple of minutes in the second half, I don't the, the one, one up until I thought I just thought yeah, there was just something about them, and I think maybe did it feed into the whole? God, we're only one nil up at half time. Yeah, you know it, that's again. Rod said two nil. They have, they have a couple of chances though at 1 0 in the second half as well. They, they, they get in a oh, couple yeah. of times because why wouldn't you get in? <laughs> You're going to get in, so they get in. And, and I did think, and to, to, <laughs> to, to go with fear, to go with fear that, like, like you say, they got decision making, you know, all this, you know, not finding Sobberslai. Even those times where Sobberslai was countering and he's charging through the middle or, or there's a break on. And again, wrong decisions. He should have shot. Punch, and he I should know, have I shot. Yeah. yeah, he should have shot. And, and it, again, it, it, overthinking it because it's so easy. Yeah, you just like I've got acres of space here. Why is no one closing me down? I've, the, I've got to pass it. There must be something wrong shoes. in this. And even, they, they, they know something I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, yeah you know, it's like he's going to expecting a trap door to just take him <laughs> under the pitch or something. Like. Even, even like the saves on that on that makes throughout first and second half. You know, I'm looking at it and. They're not hardly last gas saves, but he's he's part of the theatrical nature of this Manchester United team where he's making saves and it's as that, if he's making that weird acrobat- diving yeah. save he makes so that you could have just stepped over in court. Yeah, like and, and he's producing, but like in the goalkeepers union, you know, he's making all these mad saves where he's acrobatically, you know, pushing them out for corners and you know, like even with the Elliott shot, you know, you mentioned the 
Yeah, yeah. gloves yeah. made of Vaseline. <laughs> you think, you know, he's got Vaseline on his gloves, he's pushing them out. <laughs> Sorry, and then, can I just do something on physics here? Doesn't Vaseline make things slip? <laughs> That's yeah. what I would so thought. Why, yeah. because, why would you do that? Yeah. So rub it, yeah, yeah, on the gloves. You know, it's, but even like with that Elliot shot, it's just praying for, the, as you say, the deflection or even, you know, an own arm is slip in the worst possible moments. And it, it was, when that free kick went in, I just knew, right, this has got to go. This is the, the last chance. And it just came to him. And even like a bit more power on the shot from Elliot, I don't know. It could it have spilled, just, could have done whatever yeah. uh, and gone from there. He spilled one that Salah should score from. That's a 2-1. Mm. Um, Salah should score from that, puts it over the bar instead. Diaz, the Diaz late chance, I suspect, might have been ruled out. Uh, if it had gone to the video assistant referee although the video assistant referee might not have wanted to get involved with big Tony Taylor uh, in the 94th minute uh, after Anthony's had a tantrum at him uh, he might not Cheshire's have Anthony Taylor he was alright you know Altingham's Anthony he Taylor he was alright I'm genuinely I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not involving big T in this madness <laughs> do you know what I mean Tote is alright over the course of the 90 minutes I can't be, I can't be bothered getting stuck into him the first bit of you scout, you mank bastard sorry came on about 85 and I think he'd have took that before a ball was kicked <laughs> uh, the, the you know Altingham's finest um, I think he would have took that before the ball was kicked what's difficult Ian with it all is assessing performances of players that's often what we do on this show I recently had a bit of feedback which well, I used to like it when you went through every player I don't even know where to start doing that with this because of them every team that plays them gets to the edge of their box so you can't really praise us for managing to do that uh, but Every Liverpool player uh, gets to the edge of their box as well um, in the game. The game also comes in these sections where the events are up to. I find it very, very hard. I genuinely... Liverpool have 15 shots in the first half and I can't particularly tell you who played well, uh, which which should not be the case and yet here we find ourselves. It's, it's again, just to add to the general weirdness, we've gone there and, as we said, it's probably the best first half we've ever put in against them. But I like the one we were 4 nil up. That one was that, better. That one was good, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, but in, yeah. Terms, in terms of football and quality over the entire pitch, we were excellent. Apart from the fact that the back four weren't necessarily great in our area, the front three weren't great in their area, and there was only one midfielder who was doing sensible things the whole game. But apart from that, we were really good for most of the game. But I don't know how it went. You know, Endo was being caught out all over the place first half, first 20 minutes. And there was the weird shape because... So Botslai was running the people but then not doing much. And McAllister was obviously being imperious throughout most of it, but it was it was a very very odd midfield in terms of they had no midfield and we didn't seem to be overly bothered about doing much with ours. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, there was there was a status all today that the, the referee made more interceptions than the Manchester United <laughs> midfield too. Um, which 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 I think tells something of a story. Um We'll try and do it, Josh. McAllister played well again. Um, yeah. The issue is that Endo doesn't. I don't think, and I don't even think that's anything that United did. And there was a little bit of them doing what every side's tried to do this season in the first 15. City tried to do it. It goes all the way back to Will Hughes against Crystal Palace, where first 15 people tried to get about Endo and do his head in a little bit and wonder, test him out a little bit. I thought United were doing a little bit of that, but nothing special, nothing different. I just don't think he plays very well mm. in, you know, in the way in which sometimes a footballer turns up and he just doesn't play very well that day. I, I don't think Endo had a good game. I do wonder whether or not he was maybe still carrying whatever the knock was to a degree I, I think he's just off it but yeah, McAllister yeah. wasn't uh, which which helped yeah I think uh, McAllister I think first 15 20 I felt like he was getting man marked or something to me because um, he, he, he grew as the game went on um, but he, he's the kind of player who you know amid that chaos that you know in such a pressure cooker as well he's the lad who you're guaranteed to get Cool decisions out of you. You guarantee to get composure out of McAllister, and you know if you're looking at decisions and things like that, he he constantly makes the right one. And um, it was a shame Endo was was slightly off it. I mean, did did he play in the the FA Cup game? Endo, yeah, uh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, he has a goal to Salah. So it wasn't his half. It wasn't his first game at Old Trafford. In no, fact, yeah, yeah, goal to Salah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was a bit of a turning point. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, strange. But I mean, I don't know how, f- how fit he was or whatever. But we, we the alternatives was with Curtis Jones, who was also probably just coming back. Gravenberg, similar. So and Harvey Elliott. Who... I'll say what I said in the pre, pre and it really irritated people. Gomez at six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's if a... you want to get McAllister further forwards, Gomez t- when he subs McAllister. So I think Bradley looked knackered, Josh. Yeah. yeah. So I think Bradley did have to come off. So it's not quite the, f- the same thing. But I think Liverpool end up in a situation where they sacrifice McAllister's calm decision making around their penalty area for him to go and play six because Endo's struggling. But there might have been an argument for five minutes with Gomez at six first. Do just get five more, eke five more minutes out of Bradley. And then from there go, okay, this is not, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah. Cause, because I think that that's, 
that that's a, that becomes a little bit of an issue that when you're talking about more calm. That said, Elliot. I think is, is excellent when he comes on. We'll come on to that in a minute. But I, I do think that Liverpool could have done with two Alexis McAllisters, basically. Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, I'd see him often, ideally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think United just have this way about them where they... I think when you play them, it, it is a bit like the midfield just gets completely bypassed and overlooked and it's it, it gets emptied by by the likes of Manu and, and even Casemiro is, is caught well ahead of the ball plenty of times. Um, he's having a laugh, isn't he? Yeah, he's nuts, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there was a, a point last night uh, on Match of the Day where I was watching a Liverpool attack and I was watching him run or attempt to run. And it was like he Sold was... Sold, everything is the way in. Um, yeah, way. I mean, I, th- I thought, uh, you know, the, the latter stages of Fabinho was slow, but Casemiro, mate, I didn't realise he was that, you know, stuck in mud when he, when he tries to cover ground. Um, so the midfield was... That, that's what's frustrating. If you put on that, if you put Arsenal in, on that pitch, that's what's frustrating. The, 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 the midfield dominates. You know, Odegaard dances man at midfield, um, and Liverpool just. We had McAllister doing it a little bit, but we we didn't really take advantage of. Well, Sobosly was dancing around. He was then just doing something mad yeah. once he danced. <laughs> yeah, he was. That, that bit wasn't the difficult bit. The bit was then on the edge of the penalty area, and that's the that. This is back to the decision making point and the weirdness point. And now there's another video for someone mm. else to watch. It could be Arsenal. I think Bournemouth might make mince meat out of Manchester United on Saturday next week. Genuinely, <laughs> might make mince meat out of them. It's the half five, and I think Bournemouth might get nine. Uh, to be honest <laughs> with you, um, but then United might get seven, or it might just be nil nil because nothing makes any sense um, again mm. Ian Sabozlai progresses the ball well as I say moves forward does a really really good job carrying it over and over and over again the issue is then how he uses it yeah it's um, there's not a, I don't know where I am with Sabozlai at the moment he, he's not the um, endlessly creative player we saw the first few weeks of the season what? he's obviously gone through that injury period he's come back he's, he's he what? looks he looks mostly sharp I think he's missing trends <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Also, we've been moving them around a bit, haven't we? We've been swapping them from right to left quite a bit. So maybe well, that, that change in positions alters them a little bit. Well, one thing I would say on him yesterday, he the, the shots that he gets. I mean, the execution isn't always great, but the shots he gets, he would have absolutely taken before the game. Klopp would have accepted those shots. They were good shots in good areas. Um, he acts as a vehicle for us as well in terms of carrying the ball from one half to the, to the other half in a lot of moments. And he creates the most chances on the, on the pitch, so I do think he's been relatively off it um, for the past couple of weeks slash months. McAllister has definitely took the spotlight from him, but I don't think he was like you know bad by any means or anything like that. I think he was just it was just another one of them games where you just kind of get caught up in the chaos a little bit. It's just it, it, it can just be a game where it just doesn't happen for you. Mm, yeah. Um, Thought Salah was intelligent, but lacked sharpness uh, through the game. Joel, I think it's understandable in a couple of senses, but we could all, we could have done without it. We could have done with him being a hundred percent of the races. I think if he is Liverpool in the game. Now I feel like with Salah, there was a bit of well, the sort the conversations between mates of mine on the on, on the bus yesterday, and even a mate mate of mine who lives abroad, and I was speaking to him. Me, me, well, my mate who lived abroad, I was, I was messaging him, so he's now starting to think like Salah's looking his age, so. Is that a? Com- I mean, maybe it's not a. Com- maybe it's not a conversation for now. But I think it's it's this what you've put on your agenda. I think there's still a little bit of rustiness about him, and I think that I can under- I can totally understand why he was subbed on Thursday night at one one. He may not have understood it because he, he was certainly far from happy about that. But I felt getting subbed early Thursday, I felt that he would he would he, he went out there yesterday with a point to prove. You know, it was clear as day, um, and he did for parts. Did did look it did look it, but. I think the the ma- lack of match fitness did tell and has this injury took a lot more out of him than what we could possibly expect, you know, because he's now had, I think, how many starts since New Year's Day? So, three or four. Yeah, that's all. And and it's his first ever long-term injury, isn't it? Yeah, it's been the first real bad injury that he's had. At since, the, since the Ramos final. So, since the Ramos final. So, you know, he's... And it's worth saying he doesn't start. He doesn't start eighteen. Absolutely fly, and he takes a bit of time to get going into it in the twenty eighteen nineteen season. He's yeah, because in those opening weeks, Manny was was the main driver, yeah. wasn't he? And even Sturridge was popping him with a few goals as well. But I think yesterday, obviously, he gets the goal. You know, when there was a bit of discourse around the penalty, even as well, there was a few people. I could hear a few people around me saying that, "Oh, it's got to be given to McAllister." Well, I can understand because of how well he took his penalty against City and, and in Prague, but. Salah is the de facto penalty taker for Liverpool and 
I, I did have to tell one of my mates off, and I won't name and shame him, but basically, I heard him say out loud, he's going to miss this, and I had to turn around and say, fucking shut up. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst possible time to say, he's going to miss this penalty. <laughs> I just went, fucking shut up. Pen- did, did you feel pen- any of that, though? I felt it a bit like... Maybe a little bit inside, and maybe I was saying a couple of prayers to to, to a deceased family relative, but... <laughs> to me, man. But... I, I, I did I, I did feel that he was more likely going more than likely going to score the miss basically mm. and it was a good pen it was, it was good you pen. know when when it when it counted he, he got the goal but yeah I do think there's a little bit of a problem with him at the moment but I just can't put my finger on it and I think maybe it is the lack of match fitness but in general you know is there a conversation to be had about his age about maybe is his ability are his abilities waning a little bit or is he still feeling his way back into things after having that long-term injury. So, you know, it's a bit of a w- watch this space on him, I think, in the coming weeks. And how 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 he plays between now and the end of the season is going to be one of the big factors between whether we win anything or nothing at all. Thought Van Dijk and Robertson were excellent. Yeah. Yeah, ju- just... Robertson's doing... Robertson's come back and he looks like he's got purpose, he's got speed, and he's, he's actually... You know, he's affecting the game in the way that you want the left-backs to do. As good as Joe Gomez has been <sighs> playing left-back... Robertson is a different vehicle altogether down there. And Van Dijk... One, one point to make about Van Dijk is Van Dijk is literally telling Quonset to put the ball back to Kelleher. Oh, so, he absolutely was, yeah. 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 So he, he's, he's he's telling the players around him what they should be doing. He's managing the situation on the field perfectly. Why Quonset makes the decision he makes is completely beyond me. But, you know, he's a 21-year-old lad who's only come through this season, so no stick for him. But yeah, Van Dijk's fantastic again. Van Dijk is playing a... His highest ever level, I think. He's certainly as good as we've ever seen him. He may be better than we've ever seen him. This may be his best ever season. Roberts. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought he was great, genuinely. I thought, and I felt that, you know, Diaz misses from a Robertson knockdown uh, late on. I, I felt like it, it was going to come from Elliot or Elliot Gomez or Robertson, as odd as that is uh, late in the game, is where the three places I thought it was going to come from from Liverpool. And that ball, I think, was swung in by Elliot for Robertson to knock it down. Diaz is eight yards out and. Sadly, doesn't just keep it down because I think if he does, it's a goal. Yeah, to be honest, it feels like the past couple of weeks, months, um, our left side has been a, a bit blunt, really, um, as opposed to the right side. And it, this is one of the games where that wasn't the case. I think we, we arguably provided more of a threat down our left through Robertson and Diaz than we did through the side where, you know, Salah's there, Sobos lies there, Trent is usually there. Bradley, we know, likes to get forward. So, yeah, it was a nice change in that sense. Uh, I thought I think Robertson compliments Diaz quite well. But yeah, just uh, just frustrating that we. That, I mean, Virgil. I thought Virgil was spot on as well. I mean, leading that back line and things, and for the, for the goals, and not a, not a great deal he can do about it. So yes, yeah, I mean, Klopp was having a go. I think actually about uh, pushing up higher for the main goal. Um, something to do with Robertson and 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 Van Dijk dropping too deep or something like that. But I'd have to have a look back at that. But generally, yeah, I think I think Liverpool were, were pretty good in that sense. Uh, the subs. Josh, I think that, you know, I think Gomez does really well. Um, I think Jones was really good, apart from occasionally mild, mildly surprised by the madness. Uh, I thought Gakpo was lively and I thought Elliot was excellent. The goal four of them brought something to the party, to say the least, which yeah. bodes well. Yeah, I agree, yeah. They all made a difference when he came on. I think Gakpo has, has, has um, been a, a relatively nice surprise over the past week. I think his last two appearances, it's felt like he's on the pitch. And that, that's, that's important for me, I think. Of late, it, he's felt a bit anonymous. He's felt like a bit of a ghost when he's been involved, um, not putting himself about enough and, and covering enough ground. And I think in, in, in this game, he came on, put himself about certainly, and, and it felt like he was on the pitch. It felt even more the case a couple of days earlier. Um, Elliot, we feel like, you know, it feels like we've touched on it plenty of times in this podcast that Elliot makes a difference whenever he gets involved, really. It feels like he's the type of player who does watch the game from the stands and. When he comes on, he you know he's really good at switching the play and things like that. Creative in those tight spaces, wins the penalty. Um, so yeah, I mean we've we've always had those we've had them distance. Makers. In hindsight, you wish he'd started. No, no. There's something about I always say there's something about the Old Trafford pitch that's absolutely massive, and it feels like that was one of the main perks of of involving Sabo's life for me, which is his ability to cover ground and. Um, McAllister covers ground in his mind, so he doesn't need to cover ground with his legs as much. And um, I was happy with the with the starting lineup. To be honest, I had no complaints about it. Um, I think Elliot is always a good impact sub, and he proves to be the case again. 
Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say the same, Josh. I think it was the best, the best possible team we could have picked, bar one or two, possibly. You know, maybe there's a question around around Canate and Quanta, but you know, mm. I think we're, we're probably going to come on to this shortly about managing Canate's fitness, and it, it is a delicate, you know, situation because you can see why Quanta started because obviously Canate was a bit of a doubt last Sunday for Brighton. So here you go, Canate got Thursday, Quanta got yesterday, and then we'll see see what happens from here on in. But I think in general, the team was the team. You know, I like Elliot when he's coming on as an impact player, even though my granddad doesn't. <laughs> but um, you know, with Jones, he's looking he's getting he looks he's looking like he's getting there. And it's now a question of when do you start Jones? You know, when do you feel like that he's gonna be fully fit to start a game? It could be this Thursday, it could be Sunday against Palace, you know. So that that'll be an interesting way to see. Gapo, yeah, I totally agree. I think he's looking better. Um, I'd like to see Gakpo start Thursday again. You know, we'll pick a team for Thursday shortly. But if if Gakpo can get a goal or two against Atalanta, then it, then again that's more feeding more confidence into the running, and then hopefully he can transform that as Europa League form into the Premier League for the, for these final set of fixtures. Yeah, I, I think the, the only thing for me about the subs, um, Case has got dispossessed a couple of times in midfield, which very, very rarely happens, mm. which I think might just illustrate the entire madness of the game because United did get on a little bit. Um, I think it was but, a bit like, why are you there? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, You it's, shouldn't be there. Fuck it, now. Honestly, on. honest God, normally he'll run through people and come yeah. out with the ball, and, and yesterday it just didn't happen for him a couple of times, which, which shocked me, but... He came on and again did the sensible things, and that's very much what he's doing at the moment. And you know, at the moment, he's been back for two games. Um, but this season, he's doing sensible things. He's, he's, he guards the ball well. I thought Elias, in the time he was on the pitch, had a shelf for man of the match. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. It, it, I think it may be, as you said, the watching the game from the stands and assessing what's going on, well, from the bench and what, assessing what's going on. But when he comes on, he plays in different pockets to everybody else. Yes. And he's seeing a different through ball to everybody else. He's also willing to do that slightly hoisted little left foot curve over into the penalty McAllister area. loves finding him as well. That's the yeah. thing. McAllister, McAllister loves finding him and he loves finding McAllister and that's not a bad thing ever. He's, he's an incredibly intelligent footballer and he does different things to everybody else. If you want the pace, he's... The pace, he seems to have added a bit of pace to his game. He's never going to be the quickest game, quickest footballer on earth, but he seems to have added a bit of pace, but he's always got the dynamism and he doesn't stop moving. So I think he's, I think he deserves a start. I, th- I think Thursday probably does see him, I know we are going to do it in a bit, but I think Thursday probably does see him get a, a very, very deserved start. But he's tended not to influence the game in the same way when he starts. He's fantastic for impact. All right, the bigger picture then. We'll start with Liverpool themselves. Um, Joel, something could do with the injured lads back, I think, en masse. Um, I think Jota, Trent Alexander-Arnold, goalkeeper, um, all three of them getting back and, and feeling like they're fully involved would be no bad thing. I think, ironically, um, if there's if there's the possibility of it, a little bit of bicetage as an option between now and the end of the campaign might be no bad thing so that if you are feeling as though you've got to make a change at six, you're not necessarily moving McAllister back, um, which I think has, has come upon us a, a little bit quickly, but I think that's now where we are. Um, it is. It will be good to start to see uh, a number back in, full team training, as the manager refers to it from, from, well, from today. Yeah, ideally, because I think yesterday, maybe that was a potential sign for why we need them back on mass. Because, you know, the lads who've been fit and have got us to this point of being excellent, you know, let's be clear about that. I've, um, I've, I couldn't have been proud of the effort that some of these players have put in this season in very difficult circumstances. You know, when you've had to put Joe Gomez in as a six of Forrest away, for example, or, you know, relying on kids to come on like... Jaden Zan's getting a few minutes here and there against Luton and Forest, or um, you know, McCon- James McConnell, for example, getting the odd minutes here and there, and then even even in the last couple of weeks, you know, players who are playing out of position, Connor Bradley's been brilliant throughout to come fault him, same with Quanta. But it gets to a point where they can only do so much, and their limitations are told in the most unfortunate set of circumstances. That's not a criticism of them, but it's just the fact that you know we've got all the, these quality players missing who. I've got the experience and the know-how to get us through certain situations and, you know, my God, what we could have done with, with Jota, you know, again, at Old Trafford like yesterday, throwing him on with 15 to go to just get us a goal, get us a goal from anywhere, you know, considering the form that he was in up until the injury between December, December on, sorry, between New Year's Day up until, up until he got injured. Um, Alexander-Arnold as well, you know, what we could have done at times 
for his set piece deliveries and obviously Allison is Allison, you know, and the the one thing for me that has really irritated to me is the lack of clean sheets because basically because basically I think had we kept more clean sheets, I'd be more a lot more confident about us winning the league. You look at Arsenal, they're not keep, they're not sorry, they are keeping a lot of clean sheets and they've got the best defensive record in the league and that is why they are where they are at the top of the table. So that to me has been our biggest weakness really and I'm really hoping that as you say, Neil, for this week, if we get a few of these play, injured players back, ease them back in from, you know, ideally Atalanta, if not Palace on Sunday, and then we go from there. I think he, the thing that he gives them first, if he can get them back, Josh, is it just gives them another couple of options. As I said before, you know, he felt he had to move McAllister back if he's got, uh, by Setic, if he's got Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's got other options if... Endo just has a bit of an off day if you just want to rest him as the games come thick and fast if you don't want to rush him back from an injury but in the end he has to compromise somewhere else and this is still a little bit of a a minor a minor issue you know I think it's began to fray just a tiny little bit the idea of having to compromise from somewhere else and then as part of that as well you then begin to get into locked into conversations about the nature of that compromise you know for instance does it feel right now and it's not simply because of the the error made but does it feel right now as though would we rather have had Canate for Manchester United or for Sheffield United? And this is, you know, all of this I think is is mm. just a little bit of a, it's just a little bit of a trick that I think is is difficult for the, you know, it's been difficult for the manager to keep absolutely nailing over and over and over again. Um, I think just simply having the weight of numbers now, and he's getting closer to it. Don't get me wrong, but having the weight of numbers now would help. Yeah, I must admit, to be honest, that that Canate decision I found a bit curious. That That's not one I would have went for. I mean, obviously, I don't have as much information as Klopp does, but I would have done that the other way around, personally, uh, just because of the nature of Man United, how how often we get attacked down their left, our right, by that team. Canate is just a monster covering ground and, and dealing with them 1v1 situations. And Listen, Kwanzaa did it really well, by the way, and if he doesn't make that mistake, we won't even have this convo. So it's probably not even worth having, because other than that, he was decent, but... Canate felt more suited to me, more you know established for for that kind of for a, for a game the size of that. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the options, Klopp's proved over the past couple of years when he's got everyone available, he's a master at using the squad. We've got Europe coming up, so we're going to be playing every three days. Um, for I don't think that's a bad thing at this point. No, well, we, you can get rhythm, can't you? You can get in that, in that kind of state. You can get everyone momentum. in rhythm. You can, get, yeah. you can get 18 into rhythm, 20 into rhythm, yeah. if you see what I mean. It's not like it used to be with the Champions League or when it felt like you only had 14 and you worried about the legs. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. can make, for me, we'll come on to it in a minute, but you can make four, five, six changes uh, for Atalanta. And what it'll actually add to is, well, it'll, key, it'll get everyone who needs, who could do, like Gravenberg could do with another game. Mm. Elliot could do with a start. Uh, Greg Gakpo could do with a start. Uh, you can even make an argument around, you know, Gomez could do with you know either going back to left back maybe you can have a little look at Shimakas in case you wanted to use him for 20 here and there if Trent's back at some point it gives him the opportunity I think everyone can build with this I don't think it's a bad thing for us I think it, I think it makes it harder for our rivals but I think it makes it more straightforward for us Yeah on top of that as well three of the lads especially were coming back in, in Jota Trent and Alisson are just three top top footballers and, and you're at a point in the season now where your performance can be, your performances can be so good, but to get the results, you you do need players to deliver in certain moments. And if you just boss a football and you're one of the best footballers on the planet, you, you are more likely to do it yet yeah, than someone who's experienced and seen your football for the first time this season or something like that. So when you get to this point in the season where you know it's the business end, you know where every single decision is scrutinised, every single point matters. You, you want your best players on the pitch and, and Liverpool are getting to that point now. That's where, for me, one of the things that I came back to yesterday leaving the ground was Van Dijk and Robertson really good. If you see yeah. what I mean, like Robertson feeling like he, he's back, he's done well again there, it's another performance where I feel as though he's done well. You know, to me, that's a way home and that's, that's to Josh's point. The footballers who have been at the very top of the game for a long, long time are hugely useful right now and we could just do with having a full complement. Well, the, the three lads who are hopefully potentially coming back in the next week are all leaders as well. So it's not just the fact that they're fantastic footballers. They're all leaders of that team. They're, they're lads with experience. You can see it over the line by managing the game on the pitch as well, which, you know, no disrespect to the kids who've come through and played. They've been brilliant. 
but they've played a lot more football than anybody ever expected them to. The fact that they've had to play is putting them to, you know, Bajetic levels of exposure to the possibility of injuries. You know, our overplaying of Bajetic last season basically broke him for a year. Um, so the, the lads who've come in have done brilliantly, but they should never have needed to. The, the size of our injury crisis this season has been so big that we've not had that rotation at any point during the season. And, and that adds to everything. So the fact of where we are at the moment is miraculous given what we've had to go through. So if we can get to a fully fit squad, you know, Bartiago, obviously, for the last few weeks of the season, it's a hell of a place to be in. And it is lads who think while they're on the pitch. The lads who've got more experience coming back makes all the difference. So as part of that, Ian, seven to go, um, they'll probably need to win all seven? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think so, um, and I think we're going to. I, I don't think this changed anything. I still think we'll win the league. I've, I've thought it since August. I'm not going to change my mind now. Um, I, th I think the fact that, you know, again, me and Josh were talking on the way in, Arsenal's running as hard as ours. They don't look like losing at the moment. They don't look like conceding. But they've got a London derby coming up. They've also got Chelsea coming up. They've got United away coming up. Obviously, every one of us, all three of us playing Spurs in this run-in. But I think for, for Arsenal, Spurs v Arsenal... Is Man United versus us? It's it's there. We've got to go to Goodison Park, though. We've got to go to Goodison Park, but the, the, the Blues aren't overly hopeful about what's going to happen on that, other than us making our goal difference better. There is. Well, you say that Ian. I'm, I'm not saying Fuck that. Fuck off, Ian. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm frankly, not, I'm not counting. <laughs> I'll take a one 0 win against um, them. We'll come back to that in a minute or two. But honestly, <laughs> I've nearly just ended the show off the back of that. Ian, I'm going to have to, going to, have to look at that one uh, and come back around in a minute or two. All right, Joel. <laughs> You know, I think I think there's a couple of things that are happening, and you've got to get not get too carried away by one game here and one yeah. game there. Uh, but it feels to me like looking at Arsenal, the big difference that I think's changed for Arsenal is that Havertz has massively come to the party, and I've always liked him as a player. Uh, and I actually thought he got he got hard lines from a lot of people earlier in the season. It feels like he's massively come to the party. I think City, um, they're not massively reliant on De Bruyne, but they're massively reliant on being able to flip between De Bruyne, Foden, one other, and De Bruyne's a big part of that. He's got to stay fit for them. For us, I would argue, if I was doing the Arsenal version of this, I'd be going, Christ, McAllister's come to the party for Liverpool in a big way. Yeah. You've got to bear that in mind as well as we get to this point and, and move it along. As I say, I think you're in a situation here where there's a reason why it's 71, 71 and 70. It's a reason why you're looking at all of them. It's a reason why you know we are where we are. I think the toughest run on paper is one thing. As I say, we've got Goodison. Um, I think it's going to be about getting momentum up. And for me, now looking at it, it's all about the next four for Liverpool. They've got three, they're going to have, they have Palace, put the European games to one side, and then they've got three away games in a week. And there's loads of room to slip up in those three away games. And we've got to look at the away form this season and say that if, if there's an area where we need to improve, it's the away form. Liverpool win this or lose this. I think I think they beat Palace on next Saturday or Sunday. I'm not being complacent about that. They'll have to work hard to do it. Yeah. But I think they've got to come out that that week with three away wins and they've got to come out with nine points. Yeah, 100%. And in recent seasons, our, our, our respective forms at those places has been patchy. Well, we've beaten Fulham well, three times this season. We yeah, played Fulham I mean, for three matches. Yeah. I know, but we, I mean, what yeah. I'm saying, this is my point here, is that Arsenal didn't win a Fulham, they got beat a Fulham. I think in yeah. a really weird way, Brighton suit Arsenal. I think that Man United might suit Arsenal, but Fulham suit us this season. We played them three times, beat them three times. You've got to look at it that way and go that way on it. I think we've actually got quite a decent record at West Ham in comparison to where West Ham have been in the yeah. table. But there's good as some park. Yeah, I was sorry, I was just going to come on to West Ham that we've won practically all bar one or two there since they've moved to the London Stadium. But Fulham away, from from memory, it's obviously like you know the last the last couple of times we've been here, we haven't we haven't won a game at Craven Cottage since Milner scored the penalty there in 2019. And we won the League Cup. Yeah, we got the draw there. Yeah, but we, yeah, went, and, we won the yeah, tie. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, we won the tie. But, but what, what I'm saying is, like, I, I think about the opening game there last season when we were absolutely terrible and got a draw. And then even before that, in the COVID season, we were terrible again, got a one-all draw. And, and and yeah, as I say, like, the, the record there is patchy. Goodison is Goodison. You know, the amount of times we've had a nil-nil there, I, I've, I've lost count of them because it just feels like we go there and draw nil-nil practically every year. And we've only won... I mean, we we haven't lost there since 2010. Where's the woods? Where's the woods? <laughs> Such woods. Such woods. Right? But we've only won twice there on the clock. More often than not, the horrible games. They dog it out. We get a nil-nil there and everyone's coming out there fuming that we haven't battered them because of how crap they are, similar to Man United. So those three games, you're all right, Neil. We've got to win them. It, there's just no... It's a non-negotiable. Like we've got to go there and win all three. And the form that, that we've been in away this season, it's been all right. All right. It's been a lot better than last season. 
but they've got to win them. And Pal- even Palace last season was a game that we dropped points in as well at Anfield. So we've just we've we've got to attack these next few weeks. What was your centre half partnership? Uh, at Palace alone last season, yeah. uh, it was Nat Phillips and Virgil Van Dijk. It was Nat Phillips. Yeah. Go on. Um, so you know, there's even other games where you know Tottenham can be kingmakers and all of this, or the joker in the pack. They've got they've got to play all three of us. Uh, Villa go to Arsenal this weekend. We've got we've got to go to Villa Park. Um, well timed that because they've got Lille on on Thursday, and that'll be that's for Villa. Not quite the bigger game, but it's a massive game for Villa. Yeah, and if you're a Villa fan. You're dreaming of winning a trophy, aren't you? I know, I know they're in the conversation with Soft Four and they've messed up again on the weekend, but if you're a Villa fan, you're getting carried away, aren't you? You want to you win a trophy at the end of the day. So I'd say that was the bigger game for me as a Villa fan if we were doing a Villa version of this. So our running now is just... It, it, there's, there's all games there that you feel, you feel like there's potential booby traps. You know, for example, City, go to Lu- City play Luton at all on Saturday. That could be any scoreline you like. Mm. Whereas with us, that just feels like it's not an option at all. You know what I mean? So I think, I think we, we yeah, it's, I'm, I'm repeating myself, so I'm going to stop. We've just, just got to win all seven and then worry about goal difference at the least as eight. I felt dead optimistic two minutes ago. It's, <laughs> it's a hell of a week. It's a hell of a week to win three consecutive away games in this league, full stop. It doesn't happen that often. So what they're going to have to do, Josh, now that that's what the, yeah. what the dropping points against United, I think, has done is it's removed. I felt the cushion. Yeah, but also I think I, I, I felt there was an argument for a period they could burn the other two off. If they'd have won, say, seven, the first seven on mm. the bounce, because I think that there's a point where Europe happens, maybe either of those two drop points, it becomes hard for them, and they look at it and go, you know what, Liverpool, it just feels a bit too far now. I think that's gone. I think that the opportunity to do that's gone with this result. But I also think that the other part of this is that they now have given themselves, I think, until you can reassess it, I think, after these four games. And maybe, maybe we'll have another little bit of a cushion somewhere, maybe. Uh, but I think that realistically now, it's... It, I think they've now got to win all seven. Yeah, I do. I, I agree. I think, I think City are going to win all of theirs, and I think I Arsenal. I'm not sure how many Arsenal are going to win, right? But they are a joke, you know. They they are a serious teammate, and I've been saying it for ages now. It feels like people are starting to click on finally that they are a, a seriously good team, and people have been inclined to look at like what they've been in the past, previous seasons, bottling it, whatever. They are a really, really good side, and they're conceding absolutely nothing. So. If they go and win the league, if they go, and, you know, I mean, they deserve it. Put it that way. That they've got a tough run. They've got still in Europe, potentially got a double, a two legger with City. So, I think the thing with Arsenal, despite them being arguably, I think probably the best coach team in the in the league at the minute, is that that intangible stuff of getting to like four games away from champions. You've got a lead. It's nil nil after like fifty minutes or something like that. I mean, they haven't won a Premier League since two thousand and four, is it? Yeah, so, twenty years. You know, that's it. Can't not like play some kind of part. I mean, even City past previous years. I think they go they, they go behind uh, against Brighton final day. Yeah, they go two down against Villa final day at home. Was it? Yeah, it was at the Etihad. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's Pep Guardiola's Manchester City treble winners. Season champions with Arsenal, despite them being outrageous, it does feel like with them games, especially, they could just, just something, just you know, something could just impl- impact things. And seven games to go is still, there's still plenty of room there for just ra- the randomness of football to have some kind of an impact it's a bit on, of a on, all, on all three teams. But what, what I'd say, what they need, Josh, is a similar game to what happened at Anfield last season, where they go two 0 up, looks very easy. And then they get complacent. Yes, yeah, they need the wobble. And and yeah, like that way they can see the big leads, whether it's against Tottenham or even a Wolves it, in a couple of weeks. It, it, even just conceding first, just don't it, put any faith in Wolves. Wolves are finished. <laughs> <laughs> even just conceding first, like they haven't they haven't conceded first for, for ages. I think, the, in fact, I think it's sort of start right. I think twenty twenty four. I'm not even sure they've been behind once, and if they have, it's like you're talking like ten minutes. I, I'm sure I've seen that. Um, so they they haven't had that kind of. That seed of doubt in, in the heads whatsoever. And we just kind of need something like that to happen. But five clean sheets on the bounce now. It's the best in, in the Premier League for years and years, I think, since that's happened. I think 2005 might have been the last time that happened. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in, in the next couple of weeks. But Liverpool have just got to do their job and, and hope that... They can keep. I think keeping the lead over City is, 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 is the main thing. And then second, just hope Arsenal have some sort of hurdle they've got to jump in the, in the next seven at least one you know but hopefully a few of them 
Pick me a team for Atalanta. Anyone? Any takers? Go on. I'll go for it. Go on. Um, I'd start Gapo, give Nunes yeah. a rest, have him firing for Palace. Um, there's a conversation around Jones to be had. Yeah. Depending on if he's fully fit, I'd go, I'd go Jones, Elliot. Um, but where do you play Elliot? You know, do you give Salah the night off? Do you put him on the bench in case of emergency and put Elliot further forward or put him, put him in, in the middle? Maybe after Endo's performance yesterday, you know, there's a conversation to be had over him. Um, I'm not so sure. Defense. Surely you just ask Endo to go again. You go, you go Canate in defence. I think, I think you've got. A, I think. But then you want Canate for Palace. And I this do, is this, to go to the Canate management point, jo- uh, Joel. This is mm. this is where if you decide that you're doing Canate for ninety against Atalanta, the last thing I want is to look at a team sheet next Sunday and go fucking hell, he's not started Canate again because he did ninety midweek. Yeah. Do you know mm. what I mean? This is I where. Suppose, yeah, I mean, I, I think well, I'm just going off the logic of the fact that it's been like. Quanta, then Canate, then Quanta. Yeah, but I want Canate playing oh, the league yeah, games. Oh yeah, I want, I want him playing yeah. league games as well because yeah. I think he's more important. So what? So, so, so what do you do? Because he's done in the past. He could do Quanta. He could do 45-45 yeah. with Van Dijk and Canate. I was going to yeah. say that. Yeah. Well, I'd say that maybe Quanta and Canate. I'd go. I'd go that maybe Thursday if you if you if you want to sign this Van Dijk. I know we still got or 45-45. Uh, as, yeah, but well, Atalanta are still going to be tough. You know, I'm not I'm not writing them off by any sense. But just they're, they're really good signs. The sixth in Italy, they're not. They're not mugs. They won three 0 at Napoli recently. They're not mugs. But I just, what I don't want is to look at a team sheet next Sunday or to have the rumours come out beforehand. Oh, he's not started Canate. Honestly, that can fuck off. Yeah. So he's got. What, what I want him to do is do whatever it does. That means Canate starts against Palace. The, you know what I mean? That's it. Mm. That's the priorities. Whatever I want him to do, whatever that answer is. To be honest with you, Canate all the way through the season, I found it a little bit odd, and I've, I've kept thinking to myself, well, it'll be because he's going to come to the fore at the end of the campaign. But now it is the end of the campaign, yeah. and he's got to play league games. Yeah, <laughs> he, he can't keep playing to. fucking midweeks. Think apart from against Everton, when he definitely <laughs> plays. <laughs> and I think that I think left back. Um, I'd, I'd go Gomez maybe. You know, if you if, if there's a bit of Ram Robertson, you know, um, or, or Shimikas as you mentioned before, um, and then further forwards. I'm not too sure that why I'd left. I'll, do, I'll pass that on to someone else. Do you not think he just goes? He, that's now, a fair bit of rotation. That's what I, I, so yeah. I wonder whether... I'd say four or five changes tops. Yeah. I, think we, I think we can get away with that. Do you think... I think I wonder if he's going to go stronger because that often that is the way it ends up. Mm. I think that will irritate me genuinely no matter what he fucking does is if he starts Canate in this one and then Canate doesn't start against Palace. That's the only thing that he can do that's going to do my head in. Yeah. But I think he will make a couple of changes minimum. I won't, like, for instance, I think Salah's starting. I'd be really surprised if Salah doesn't start yeah. the first leg of the quarter-final. Same with Virgil for me as well. I think yeah. Virgil's a shooting, but... Um, I think you want to rotate I think there's certain players that you can bring in and hope that the overall level of the team doesn't drop at all like if Gakpo c- c- gets involved and he actually plays like the Gakpo we, we know he can be we'll be fine you know there's no dip in, no dip in quality there at all so I think I'd I, I bring Gakpo in and hope that he he brings forward the two kind of substitute appearances that he's had and puts it into a 490 performance Elliot and Jones Um yeah, I wouldn't be too against that. Um, but I mean, just to play McAllister. I'd, I'd go Endo Elliot Jones. So you give McAllister. I'd, go, the I'd, give Mc, I'd give McAllister. The, I would give McAllister the game off off the basis of the fact that you might, from that point onwards, be asking him to play every game. Yeah. Because I think if you play in a semi final of the Europa League, I think you're picking your first eleven. I think if you play in Everton midweek, you're picking your first eleven. Mm. Um, if you if you don't want me to knock around to your house in Freshfield, um, <laughs> I think if you if you you know from there, I think you're picking. So I think that you, you the idea. Or when I say your first eleven, you might make two or three changes, but you're making them around the idea of the the team to get the results. If you sort of know what I mean, yeah, yeah. I think this is the last one where there's any degree of leeway. So I think it's your last one where I think you can say to McAllister, you're not going to start this one, we'll have you on the bench in case we need you and we'll go from there. I think yeah, it's your last yeah. time to get to say that to one or two of the others. But like you, I just think I just think you start Van Dijk and Salah uh, anyway and maybe do, you yeah. look at them for the away game because that could be your other one if you get a good result in the first one. And then also you've got the idea of maybe having Trent off the bench. Yeah, this is a man market team as well, by the way, Atalanta. So, you know, you, you can kind of, you know how they're going to press, you can entice them in. If you've got Virgil doing them diagonal switches, you're probably going Salah on the pitch. To, to receive them and get it on the back line so um, and I think with Salah as well and Endo going back to the points that we made earlier you could argue both of them need a bit more rhythm yeah. the, you know they're both Endo as well you know never they never get injured neither of them so you can probably give them another run out and hope that they get a bit of momentum behind them What? what I, sorry I, I do apologise what I forgot to say about Salah before as well and I naively forgot is the fact that he's been fasting for a month so that's you know true, that's yeah. being a big that's factor. That 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 can be the a big factor in why like there's there was a little bit of discourse around Salah yesterday. Maybe so. Yeah, I do apologise. Could, could also link into the Canati thing. Yeah, because obviously um, 
at the Sheffield United game, they got to break the fast in the middle of the game. Yeah. And there, there was no way that was happening at United, was it? Because no. it's not all day. Sun doesn't go down. No. Um, Bradley, Kwanzaa, Van Dyke, Gomez, Endo, Elias, Jones, Salah, Gakpo, Diaz. I think that you might well be very, very close to the team. Think Trent, are we all hopeful that we get 20 minutes of Trent off the bench? I hope so, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hopefully, uh, Jot is back in training this week, isn't he? So That's the talk, but you never know. With if, this. if so, maybe just the last 10 minutes for Jota. Uh, and go from there. All right. Uh, I like Dean's team there. Uh, seems about right as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I didn't pick a goalie. Uh, I presume you're picking Kelleher. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I presume you're picking Kelleher, and we'll go from there. Uh, all right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Sam Walker Dine, uh, for enjoying it from an Arsenal perspective behind the camera. <laughs> uh, Heaton, uh, for producing uh, the sounds as we go all the way through it. Uh, Ian Salmon, Joel Richards, uh, and Josh Williams. Uh, it has been the Anfield app after Liverpool got beat 2 2 by Manchester United. Honestly, I'm just pleased we haven't got to play them again because my head was absolutely fried yesterday. Uh, nothing is lost Liverpool just now need to win seven league games